Hello everybody, and welcome to the concluding instalment of Season 2 of this My Team Career Mode campaign. We are at the Brazilian Grand Prix. If you haven't seen the last one from Portugal, do go back and check that one out. Before you check this out, this is your last chance to do so before spoilers. Wow. Just wow. Bottling a win in that fashion in Portimao is probably one of the most painful moments I've ever had doing a career mode campaign on F1. But we're going to put that behind us and we're going to go all out for the finale here at Brazil. First things first, of course, is getting through Q1, which is proving difficult because our first lap, we really just didn't have any pace at all. And we seem to be nowhere, so... A second lap is on the cards here, and we have got ourselves into the top 10, and that will just about be enough to get us through before the rain came. And it dried up, though, towards the end of Q3, Q2, so setting a quick lap by the end of Q2 was critical, as the track was drying rapidly. And we made sure we were one of the last out so that we could get the track at the best time. And as a result, we were quick and we got through Q2 quite nicely. Albeit it was a little bit close. But both me and Piastri made it through by a good couple of attempts. But the shock there is that George Russell is out at Q1. That's Q2, sorry. That's a big surprise here. Another story of this race weekend is that Fernando Alonso comes in on the verge of clinching his third world title and he will be retiring at the end of this season. So he'll be looking to go out on a high note but for us it's P5 on the grid for the sprint race which is just ahead of us. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting sprint. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Norris, Joker, and Fernando Alonso. Albon, Hamilton, Perez, and Oscar Piastri. Russell, Magnussen, Mick Schumacher, and Joe. Gasly, Drogovic, Nicholas Latifi, and Esteban Ocon, Sonoda, Stroll, Vettel, and Daniel Tictum. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. Here we go then, the formation lap is underway ahead of today's sprint. So away on the formation lap, the cars go. It's a Ferrari 1-2 on the grid with Charles Leclerc, the reigning champion, starting first. Carlos Sainz second, and he'll be wanting to get ahead of Leclerc to have his best chance of keeping his title hopes alive. Fernando Alonso, all we really need to do all weekend is stay out of trouble and score a reasonable amount of points, and he's done it. So, Fernando... As much as he can't really afford to take it easy, he doesn't need to rush his way through the field. And in starting P6, he is just about where he'd want to be. I'd imagine he'll want to gain a position or two through the sprint race to give him an even better chance. But for now, he's he's pretty much sitting pretty, not just doing what he needs to do. Right then. 12 laps of the sprint race ahead of us. It's lights out and away we go. The two Ferraris get a decent start. Carlos Sainz 
trying to get a better start than his teammate, but he has to accept second. No, he doesn't. He's made a mistake and he's clipped the Red Bull. Is that Carlos Sainz with damage? He could not afford that at this critical phase of the championship. Carlos Sainz has potentially taken damage. And we ride on board with Alex Albon now. And there's a car on the outside without a front wing. It, it's me. It's me. Hi. I have no front wing. It's me. And we're going to see how that happened momentarily. But uh, oh my gosh. Look at what's going off back there. I'm trying to get the car back to the pit. We're going to see how that happened now because it's time to switch to my POV. It's lights out and away we go. We've got a very decent getaway there. Lando Norris, if anything, really not getting off the line, but he's taking a dive down the inside and I've actually hit the Red Bull of Verstappen and I've got no front wing because I've hit Verstappen. So that is a rotten start for us and I think Verstappen then tagged signs and he's and Sainz now has front wing damage as well. Alex Albon trying to go down the inside. I'm trying to squeeze him, but Albon insisting he has the room to do it. I'm giving Alex Albon a love tap as well. I have no front wing, so it's time to limp back to the pits. And that is really going to affect me moving forwards. And I think Albon and Magnussen have had a touch. So I think Albon may also have damage too. I'm banging wheels with Fernando Alonso, who's trying to force his way through. He had a dreadful start. He dropped down as low as P9, but he is going to gain positions on the front that both myself, Signs, and I think Albon will have to pit. George Russell now goes past me, and oh, oh dear. I'm just hitting everyone at this stage. Who else doesn't have a front wing? Because quite a few of us don't as Perez tries to go through. I'm going to let him go and then duck back into the pits. So who's in the pits? It's myself, Albon, and I think that might just be it actually. No, Sainz is in the pits. So Carlos Sainz critically losing a front wing and that could pretty much seal the title for Alonso. Sainz needed to finish ahead and right now he will not be doing enough to take the championship. I've gone for a gamble then. I've gone for soft tyres in the hope that there's a safety car and then we can bunch the field up and I'll have the tyre advantage. Meanwhile, here's Fernando Alonso going for P5 on Kevin Magnussen and you know what? The champion elect should have an easy job here. Magnussen defends it but Fernando sweeps around the outside and he is very much where he needs to be to secure the championship in this sprint race. It's a disaster for Carlos Sainz. And it's pretty much all over for him. Unless something highly dramatic happens. Right, back to my POV now. And we're racing Albon for P18. The old rivalry reigniting. Myself v Albon. This was the story of the first part of the season. And it's going to be the story in this final sprint race of the season because I'm not giving up. I am attacking Albon with everything I've got. Albon goes to cover. Not quite able to get through there. Oh no, I dived down the inside, but I've also overrun the circuit and I should let Albon back through here. I do let Albon back through here, but I now know where I can attack and I've slotted in perfectly to have a dive up the inside of the right-hander. Albon just stays out of the way. Gives me space. I did go a bit deep. And that is P18. I, but can I catch up with Carlos Sainz in front of me? Answer is no. Because my soft tyres are now no longer at their best. And here comes Alex Albon. Down the inside. And Albon getting the move pretty much done on me. I'm trying to hold out around the outside. No. Albon has got me. But you know what? If I can stay close around here... I will be able to perform my favourite overtaking manoeuvre again. Albon once again just not defending it. But this time I go too deep. And Alex Albon holding on to 18th place. This is such an intense battle over what is effectively P18. And pretty much worth nothing. But you know what? Every place is up for grabs here. It's a better place on the grid for the main event. Once again I am past Alex Albon. But he has got the DRS on this second straight here. And he doesn't get to use it in the first time round. But this time round, Albon, full DRS activated. I try to defend. 
Albert, though, just so much momentum going in. And he has got the position back off me once again. And I have to race him hard to try and get that back. What a battle when you consider this is just for P18. There are no points or awards for this. Just a better qualifying position. As once again, I dive down the inside and complete the move. And as we start the last lap, Albin's coming back at me again. This is the battle that keeps giving. Banging wheels. I go a little bit deep, but I hold the position. But this has allowed Albert a better run down the... Down the second straight, I go to cover Albon, seeing what I was doing there, going through. But he's going to be tight and compromised. And as he goes in too tight, I'm able to sweep around the outside. What a battle this is. But Albon's now got me down the inside there. And I've given him a love tap as he slightly brake tests me. I make a last minute dive out of nowhere and retake the position. I do feel like when Albon passed me into the right-hander before that, he went on the line and then he braked. I feel like he did slightly brake test me, but we were able to get the place back. All for pride, nothing else. And it's P18. Charles Leclerc then wins the sprint race, but Fernando Alonso is a three-time champion of the world here at Sao Paulo. Congratulations, Fernando. A three-time world champion and the season two winner. It's certainly been an incredible year for Formula One and our drivers have pushed themselves this season, making it one of the most compelling years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. McLaren and it's a deserved title for Gabbard. Fernando Alonso. His Strapped consistency up, all season has tomorrow. been incredible. Be sure it has been a close no championship fight, and I have been... Thoroughly hooked on how the championship battle was played out as much as I have been my own battle But in the end the edge goes to Fernando Alonso who's just been super consistent and super quick through most of the season It looked close at one point signs did nip the lead off of him But Alonso took it straight back the consistency in form Just going to show there right Fernando Alonso is now uncatchable but it's still all to play for for second as Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz are equal on points. And 15 points behind them and also equal are Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. Who will take second in the standings? It's time for the final race of the season. Formula One returns to Interlagos once again with the stage set for what promises to be another classic Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012 and in 2016 Max Verstappen treated us all to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. We're racing then at Interlagos, a historic 2.7 mile circuit and one of the few anti-clockwise tracks on the calendar. 15 corners in total, 9 to the left and 6 to the right with a technical middle section opening up to a flat out sector 3 that give us our best passing opportunity down into turn 1. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And Lando Norris lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Kevin Magnussen, and Russell. Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, Stroll, and Joker. Drogovic, Vettel, Guan Yu Zhou, and Tictum, Gasly. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Latifi, Esteban Ocon, and Carlos Sainz. Verstappen, Perez, they've taken a grid penalty. Albon and Oscar Piastri. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. 
Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Right then, here we go. The formation lap gets underway as the drivers prepare themselves for the final race of another fantastic season. Each driver on the grid will be hoping to end their campaign on as high a note as possible. They're almost ready to take the start of the race as the cars take their positions on the grid with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. So it's still all to play for, for second in the standings. So I wonder who's going to take that. As for us, we've secured our place in the driver's standings. We've got fifth secured in the constructor's standings. And I'm not going to lie, I've got a little bit of a backache from carrying the team to fifth in the constructor's standings. So our aim in this race is just to have fun and just see what we can pull out from it. We're starting 10th anyway, so... Let's see what we can grab from this final race of the season. So, for the last time, it's lights out and away we go. Charles Leclerc does not get away well. Lando Norris got a brilliant getaway off of second on the grid. And it looks like he's going to take the lead. He's side by side with Charles Leclerc. And Lando Norris leads the final race of the season. And Fernando Alonso is eyeing second place from Charles Leclerc. The world champion who can now no longer be caught. Leclerc's gone deep. He's made a mistake. And it is a McLaren 1-2 out front. Lando Norris leads Fernando Alonso. And Alonso could help his teammate grab second in the standings here. And this is me performing a double overtake on what I think is Lance Stroll and Yuki Tsunoda. We'll see this now from my POV. It's lights out and away we go. Stroll seemed to get away like a bullet out of a gun there. But he just had nowhere to go with it. So that's unfortunate for Stroll. He's now trying to go around the outside of Sonoda, but no way through there. I'm trying to make sure I don't hit anyone. Drogovic getting alongside me there, but I was able to hold him off. Right, down to turn what I think is four. And we're now right up the back of Lance Stroll. And this is how I perform that double overtake. Just staying nice and close to him without hitting him, of course. We don't want to lose the front wing again. Down the inside we go, and that is two places gained. Up into P8 then, and we've got the two Hasses directly in front of us on this first lap. So we've done a decent job of getting past Sonoda and Stroll, but next up is Mick Schumacher, who is doing very nicely in this Grand Prix at the moment. In P7, Lando Nor Nor Norris leading the way, setting the fastest lap, only for that lap to be beaten by Fernando Alonso. The two McLarens, I've no doubt, are stretching away. I've tried to go around the outside of Mick Schumacher, but there's no way through there. Mick covering that beautifully. However, my favourite overtaking spot is available. Down the inside we go, and up ahead of the Haas we are. Next up is Kevin Magnussen in sixth. And he's, we're going to want to get past him as quickly as possible. It's a very strong showing for Haas so far. But this is the Brazilian Grand Prix. Cars just randomly appear out of position at random. And because it's the Brazilian Grand Prix, we just go with it. Right, we've now got a run on K-Mag. Can we grab P6 here? I, I don't think so. We're not really close enough. It's worth a look, but it's not going to happen there. Again, I'm going to try and shape up for my favourite overtaking spot. Using overtake to get closer here. That does work. Right, round the long right hander we go. And carrying more speed than Magnussen. We should be able to make a last minute dive. And Magnussen sees it coming. Dives out of the way and decides, you know what? This is not my fight. So up into P6 we go. Can we catch Russell and Leclerc? At the moment, it doesn't appear to be that we're doing so. But Norris leading the way then ahead of Fernando Alonso. 
Alonso is playing the team game here and helping his teammate obtain that crucial P2 in the standings. Meanwhile, I think we're going to say goodbye to Felipe Drogovic in his home race. That's rotten luck for him. He was running just outside the point, so unfortunately we say goodbye to Drogovic. He made a great effort in Portugal to get a point, but it just wasn't to be here in Brazil. Right, lap 11, and we haven't really caught Russell and Leclerc. At this stage, we're just matching them. So I am having an idea of maybe going for an undercut and hoping that we can jump ahead of them and even if we don't go any further, just hold them back and get into P4 because I would take that for a Up final race now. finish. So out the pits times. we go and unfortunately there's a long line of cars which at the back of which is Albon and Piastri. So out the pits we come and I think Sainz has had an early pit stop as well. No idea what's happened to Carlos, but his championship campaign has all but fallen apart. And you got to feel for him, really. But in Season 3, who knows? He could come back stronger. For now, then, we have caught the back of this battling pack, the DRS train, and we have got ourselves well and truly stuck here. And this is not going to help me get the undercut on Russell and Leclerc. I'm trying to find a way past my teammate Piastri, and again... For, for the new F1 game, please implement a team orders button where I can ask my teammate to get out the way because I'm being held up here. There's no questioning it. Albert in 16th. I'm sure he'll have he'll have no no second thoughts about holding me up, and that one will be personal. So yeah, we are just a little bit stuck here. I'm trying to find a way past Piastri, but it just isn't happening. Piastri, finally, we do get past. And then I try and take a dive bomb on Albon. But like I said, Albon having Claire, no issue with taking now. the place back and holding me up. I did get a couple of clear laps when the guys in front of me started to pit. And we did slightly close up on the two in front of us. But I feel like getting held up in that train really cost us the chance for the undercut there. So, unfortunately, not a lot we can do. I can try and stay with these two. But already they were, they were pulling away after a few laps. So I decided towards the end of the race, what the hell, let's pit for softs, let's have some fun. I know that I've dropped down to potentially ninth place behind Mick Schumacher. But like I said, I just want to have some fun now. It's the last race of the season. Let's make this interesting. So I've come out and I've actually stayed ahead of Mick Schumacher, which is good news. And I'm going to try and grab an extra point for fastest lap as well. First up then is Pierre Gasly, too used to losing positions to him with pit stop strategies. However, this time out we're going to gain the place back relatively easily. And we're now going to tuck right into the slipstream, okay, dive down the inside, that's the, the place. And Gasly is going to try and fight me back, but I'm not having any of it. Next up is Kevin Magnussen. Like I said, my aim was just to have some fun and retake these guys. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're making this last race somewhat enjoyable. Otherwise, it would have just been the last 20 laps, me pottering around by myself, and I was starting to get bored. So I just wanted to make it fun, make it interesting, and this is exactly what we've done. Right, Magnussen now in my sights in P6, and it won't be long before I force my way past him. We're going to take a dive down the inside of my favourite overtaking place. And once again, Magnussen accepting that that is not his fight and letting me go and we can see a replay there Magnussen well he pretty much just backed out of that didn't he he just let me have it right this this is it then we've got past Magnussen these are the closing laps of the season what else is going on we're showing you now how much Carlos Sainz got hurt in the DR getting stuck in a DRS train Round here, you just get well and truly stuck. All speaking of stuck, Lance Stroll appears to be out of the race now. That's unfortunate for him. I, he was in and around the points, I believe. So, rotten luck for him. Lando Norris then takes the final win of the season. And with that, I believe, as Leclerc finishes P5, 
that should secure Lando Norris second in the standings. He has had a couple of wins this season and I wonder, is the win tally going to be high enough that Lando secures second? For us, it's going to be P6, a decent showing. I, I would like to have finished on the podium, but the pace just wasn't there today. And okay, the McLarens were just untouchable Rio. all race. But Lando Norris securing that final win, and I believe with that, we'll get second place in the standings. That's it then. They've taken the win here as we wrap up another fantastic Formula One season. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Joker. Look at where they finished compared to where they started. It's not well, easy that's to it then. That's like that a wrap one. for so season two. And, with that result, and Lando no Norris, well, the won table. the sprint race, They've won the feature race, like did teams, everything he could to try and get second in the standings. And we will soon see if that was enough for him to do so. Thanks to everyone who's Alonso us, we'll got fourth in the, the sprint and second in the feature, and he got the second most amount of points out of anybody. And you're going to see just how this championship finished. We grabbed a good few points as well, six and the fastest lap, and that secures us in eighth. But yes, Lando Norris does claim second in the driver's standings. Him and Leclerc are equal on points, but Lando Norris must have had the most victories out of the two of them this season and as a result it's a mclaren one two in the standings a beautifully resurgent form for lando norris in the end of the season and enough to secure him second the reigning champion charles leclerc will have to settle for third it's fourth in the end for carlos Sainz, the driver that was coming into this race as the only contender to Fernando Alonso, then it's Verstappen 5th, Hamilton and Russell 6th and 7th for the two Mercedes, where 8th and Perez was 9th. And there's the Constructors' Championship, McLaren taking a comfortable win in the Constructors, Ferrari 2nd, then it's Mercedes, Red Bull will be disappointed to be 4th, we're 5th and I'm very happy to take that. And we are comfortably clear of Alpine, who towards the end of the season may have come under threat from Alpha Tauri. Hassa 8th, Alpha Romeo a 9th, and Williams and Al Aston round out the rest. So Albon finishes 10th in the championship. Gasly moves up to 11th after some brilliant form towards the end of the season. Then it's Magnussen, Ocon, Piastri, only 17 points. For him, then it's Schumacher, Latifi, Vettel, Sonoda, Joe, Stroll, Drogovic. And Dan Tictum was the only driver to not score a point this season. Well, who's excited for season three? Can we get our first win? Can we be in that title fight? Stay tuned for season three, guys. TTFN. Ta-ta for now.